so either of the uh, one drives each other okay good any other answers sir we can also say they both are complementary sir so complementing each other okay good yeah pratish please go ahead sorry yeah Yes, Pratyush, go ahead. Sir, I want I want to say the same that they go hand by hand. Achha, okay. They are interconnected. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. So let me put it across this way. Uh, maybe I'll give a basic uh, example. Maybe from there we will try to derive this. Let's take your college canteen or a tea shop right outside your campus. I'm sure there will be a tea shop in Lavasa campus. If you go and tell that uh, tea shop owner, that look, I have artificial intelligence, I have cloud, I have IoT, all these technologies are available for free. And I can develop a solution for you using these technologies. Are you interested? If you go and ask him, will he be interested? Even if you give a solution for free using the modern day digital technology, what do you think? Sir, I think for T shop, I think, sir, because it's a small business, no? Very good. It's a small business, so he doesn't feel a need for it. Correct? Yes, sir. At the max for him, what is a technology that would be useful for him? Maybe Paytm, that QR code, digital wallet. Tomorrow, let's say, for example, across all the Christ campuses, he's opening a T-shop, let's say. So I think there are four campuses, right, for Christ. Tomorrow, if, let's say, for example, across 500 colleges across India, he's opening T-shops. He's growing bigger. It's, uh, I mean, after 20 years of running tea shop, his son is taking over the tea shop. He, he has studied engineering, let's say he's scaling it up. Now, when he's scaling it up to 500 colleges, that tea shop person may need technology to manage all the tea shops. Do you agree with me? Yes, sir. To look at yes, how much sir. revenue, what is being bought across. He may need an ERP system to begin with. So, sir. yeah, please. Sir, yeah, tally, tally, Excel and all like this. Technology. Exactly. So as he grows bigger, every department, finance, HR, operations, every department will, will need some kind of a solution, some kind of a technology to run the business. That's what we call it as business driving technology. Many a times you need to realize something. Without a need, we do not use technology. Take the, I mean, another example, you have a mobile phone. You have so many apps available in the Play, Play Store, right? Do you download all the apps? No, right? No, sir. No, sir. You that download? Useful. Yes, exactly. Whenever it is useful for you, whatever app is useful for you, you download the app and you start using it. So only when there is a need, you start using them. You start downloading them. So you need to understand one important aspect here. It is always the business which drives technology and not the technology which drives business. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, actually there was a network issue. That's why I was not able to give my attendance. Sure, I texted sure. in the group also, sir. Sorry, Tanisha. I don't check WhatsApp messages during the class. And unfortunately, the attendance has been submitted. I wouldn't be able to change that because I've been clearly instructed by the college that not to change the attendance after it has been taken. I'm sorry for that. Okay, sir. No problem. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. So here the point is. Okay, you may have a question counter question to me like. Sir, if business is driving technology, then don't you see companies like Ola. Or Uber or even Paytm or many companies are purely yes, sir, exactly. driven by technology, isn't it? Then yes, what is, the, in yeah. this case, uh, the technology is driving business in the, in the case of Paytm and Ola. But tell me so, one sir. thing, Devang. So let's take yes. Uber, for example. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, before Uber came into picture, how, do, how did the cab operators operate or auto? If you want to cab, uh, take an auto for commuting from one place to the other, how do you so take on an the basis auto? Of, on mouth the basis mouth. of customer demand. Mouth mouth. No, you just I... step out of the house, right? Yeah, sorry, Vishal, go ahead. Yes, sir. yes, sir. We can, we can, uh, means mouth to mouth, we'll go, no, sir. Means uh, we know our friends, we will ask them or we'll inquire, no, sir. Before this uh, technology has come. Sir, we used to take photos on personal grounds, like we used to, like, so, whatever the way is. Correct. So we just step out of the house, we go to the street, we check out which auto is coming there, 
the auto which is crossing our street we take that isn't it or we go to the main road if we don't get it in the street we go to the main road or yes, to the sir. auto stand and we take an auto isn't it yes sir yes sir now if you notice there was always a need for the commuter that is the passenger and the auto driver to talk to each other and to find out who needs it in the area or who needs auto in an area so both were looking for each other just that the technology has enabled it today in the form of a Uber platform or a Ola platform. The need was always there, isn't it? The yes, need sir. was driving it. The technology was not ready to provide a solution at that point of time. But today, we have the technology that is available to solve that problem. So the need is always there. Just that step by step, we are catching up in solving those problems, in addressing those needs from the company. So now do you understand that it's not the technology which is driving business. It is technology which is enabling business. That's all. The need is always there from the business side. Only when the need is there, you try to provide technological solution to it. A technology is just one approach to solve a problem or to address a need. Are you all with me when I say this? Are you all able to get this perspective? Yes, sir. Because this is something which is very important, boss. See, 3D printing we hear about, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, the industry 4.0, there are so many technological concepts going around. Is it necessary that you have to pick up everything? Not really. Is it necessary a company implements all these concepts? Not really. All we need is a problem to address the problem. What kind of solution I may need? Sometimes I don't even need a technology to solve a problem. All I need is a process change or an additional step to do it, or we doing it directly manually without the technology. But if technology can be a solution, we use it. That's all. So that's the way you need to look at every problem in the society, every problem in the corporate world. Sir, uh, what is the meaning of technology drives business or overall if we ask in general? See, with uh, let's say, for example, uh, there are some apps which are technologically very, very advanced but they become a failure. Let's say, for example, uh, which was the, I mean, maybe it's a trivia question I'll ask all of you. Which company launched an app directly for uh, e-commerce instead of starting a website? And then they realized that app is not working out, so they started a website. Sir, a snap deal? Snap deal, absolutely right. So they were, uh, here the key point here is, just because the technology was available, they created an app. They thought that, okay, app is, will solve all their problems and people will start shopping more. Just that they were very way, way ahead of the times and there was no business need or people were not ready to shop using the online mode or using the app mode. So they went back to the website. They launched a website. So. so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, please. So what, what about sir, uh, go government dealing in the arms? in defense systems okay government dealing with arms see technology if there is technology they buy it what so is the need is it, isn't it an example of technology driving business no i'll put it this way what is the need which is driving the technology adoption okay see let's say for example i am uh, take a solid locked country like for example somewhere in the central africa i am a country okay now central africa a country will it buy a submarine no sir there is no need for it right even though the technology is available correct they may have money they may have technology but they don't need that for their country there is no need for them okay so only when there is a need you tend to adopt things that's what i'm trying to say so even in the government case india buys technology because there is a threat there is a need for the government to protect uh, its citizens so for, to ensure that the threat is mitigated, the risk is mitigated, you need arms, the latest arms. Like for example, okay, remember sir. the okay. cat fight that happened between the two fighter jets between Pakistan yes, sir, and yeah. India? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So technology was able to support the uh, Indian Air Force to beat the Pakistan Air Force, correct? Yes, sir. So there was a need That's to right. beat them. To beat them, you need technology for technology. So you adopted a technology to beat them. That's the way, that's the perspective you all should have. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Perfect. No worries. Good.
so so uh, mm-hmm. can we say that technology drives uh, business growth technology enables business growth itesh let me again go back to another example maybe to help you understand this in 2005 6 okay when i came out of the college and when we were uh, joining tcs at that point of time we were given a choice to create a bank account salary bank account either with sbi or with icici if you are given that option which one would you choose sbi or icici so sbi why so it's a government bank account and the policy so the trust factor is right. yes sir okay but look at it this way convenience point of view let's say i am going to travel a lot and i'm going to use my debit card credit card and i can do everything banking online which one would be more favorable for you if you want to bank online without visiting a branch i say i say or sbi which one will give you more services so maybe icici the, the consciously i have chosen the two extremes to an extent the reason is in 2005 6 only one or two banks were offering net banking in a very very effective way hdfc and icici today we have almost every bank adopting that but icici used technology as a competitive advantage not as a core product competitive advantage over other companies other products so itesh banking still remains the core offering of all these banks but how are they differentiating themselves they are using technology to differentiate themselves it is enabling the growth story of these banks so sir in short we can say that technology gives an upper hand uh, in any business we are implementing it to yes okay in the way i mean that's where you need to understand very clearly devan like you need to know how and where to use the technology don't use it blindly like for example i'll take a simple scenario okay. so take our class okay do i need to take attendance through kp portal or can i take attendance directly using ai so directly using ai i can take it right like for example just because all of you recommended i accepted all the students from the lobby and gave attendance from yes, 45 sir. it became 37 as soon as the attendance was taken eight people have dropped out in the last 10 minutes now i don't have an option to change the attendance but i can definitely capture who has uh, dropped out and send across a message because there is a recording this session is being recorded down now there is a need for me to identify the people who are dropping out just for after taking that test people who are joining the class only for attendance now this need can be met with the help of a technology can be solved with the help of a technology correct yes sir yes sir so ai can anyway enable me or there, there can be different technologies which can clearly capture whether people are logged in or not or when did they log in when did they log out in fact some online platforms are offering this feature they capture the attendance report in microsoft teams when you organize a webinar or something you get a complete attendance report when people logged in when people logged out the time and everything is captured so the problem is solved with the help of technology so i may use technology to solve the problem but look at it this way will i go for a costly solution like this like ai or any kind of a broader solution to solve this attendance problem does it make sense no sir not at all it is expensive isn't it Yes, sir. The cost of finding the right attendance versus cost of getting a solution to find the right right attendance, or cost of bad attendance versus cost of getting a good attendance through technology. This cost is very high, good attendance. So obviously, I'm not going to prefer that. Maybe if I take uh, attendance twice in couple of sessions, I will easily identify. Right? That may be easier for me. Yes, so, sir. not every time you may need to adopt technology that's another learning you should have you should look at when to use it how to use it that's when you are going to create a competitive advantage for yourself okay good i hope you all got a perspective any questions any doubts here no sir perfect good boss now here we talk about digitalization i mean before analytics i wanted to touch this broader topic of digitalization there are two words here digitization and digitalization can anyone tell me the difference between the two sir digitalization means going everything online basically uh, cashless and uh, using the, the the use of technology is more in the everyday life that's called digitalization according to me sir 
okay then digitization um sir digitization means converting media into digital format very good yes sir lowest level of digital hierarchy lowest level of digital hierarchy yes so in a way i'll put it this way digitization is nothing but plain simple analog to digital conversion that is digitization digit means zero or one so anything that is available in paper format i'm converting it to online format so in a way the it revolution in india started with digitization to a greater extent and slowly they moved on to digitalization so digitalization is process automation like for example booking a railway ticket 15 years back i'm sure you all would have visited with your parents right to book a railway ticket you need to go so to the window booking. counter correct window yes. booking yes you go to the counter you pay money and then collect it but today with the help of an app on the go you can book it isn't it any tickets anywhere yes sir yes sir so the whole process of booking a railway ticket has been automated to a website first and then today overall we have made it completely convenient for customers to book it from anywhere this is what is called as process automation or digitalization of the process. That's the second step. The third step is called digital transformation. Digital transformation means you're changing the whole business model whereby with the help of digital technologies, you are creating a unique value proposition for your company. Let's take Christ for example. This online class is basic digital automation. Okay, this is a digital digitalization that is process automation I've done with the help of online tools like Webex. Correct? Sir, City. Yeah. The concept of work from home. That is digital. I mean, that simple digitalization was plain, simple okay. process automation. Okay. Okay, sir. But of course, if I'm enabling everything to work from home, like for example, sitting at home, you're able to collaborate with anyone across the world. Sitting at home, you're able to connect with people, take attendance, or sorry, not attendance, in the corporate world, you connect with anyone, you work with anyone seamlessly, with anyone seamlessly, you're able to get your laptop issues fixed seamlessly. If, a, if an organization is able to provide everything and anything that can make you work from home comfortably without you coming to the office, that means that's called as digital transformation. Like take okay, Amazon, sir. for example, Uber, for example. Do you, do you, do you see a customer care for Uber? Have you seen an office for Uber anywhere? Uh, yes, sir. Uber corporate office will be there. Have you seen a Uber office as such where customers no, can go no. and complain? No, no, sir, no, sir. no sir. The only interactive interface for Uber is your website, correct? Or your app, sorry. Not even the website. In website, sir, you can download invoices. Yeah. Sir, Zomato, Swiggy, including all the aggregators are like online. Exactly, in boss. Today. This is almost everything they are doing online, correct? They are moving, the, even though it is an e-commerce one, e-commerce can be one part of the business. But here they are trying to do everything online. That's what is called as digital transformation. So analytics is one of the digital technologies which you should be aware of. When we talk about digital transformation, look at all these examples. Once upon a time, book retailing. I don't know whether you have heard of this brand, Egin Bottoms. Have you heard of it by any chance? Egin Bottoms. No, when you no, travel uh, in trains, have you seen the uh, book vendor in the platform? The yes, sir, yes which sir. Will, and you would have seen Higgin Bottoms as the name there mostly. So mm -hmm. they were mm -hmm. selling books, landmark kind of company, different branches were there. Thanks to the digital transformation today, they have disappeared. Their business model has gone down because nobody is going to the bookshop for uh, smelling the book or reading that book that smell is something which attracts a lot of people to go and uh, be a bookworm to read books there but today everyone is ordering it online amazon flipkart we order books online nobody wants to go and buy books a lot of models have changed people do not want to go to theaters today they want to watch everything in ott platforms people do not want to go to a digital photo studio unless you need a passport size photograph today everything is available in mobile so a lot of business models have changed in the recent times, and this is what is happening in the name of digital transformation. So this era 
is called as a smack era. Have you heard of this word before? Smack, S M A C. Anyone? Sir, no, sir. Just no, okay. I think. Okay, then you should all remember this term. The reason I'm telling you this is the only problem with our, uh, I mean, the way we educate ourselves is many times we read uh, the we read everything in the form of history. Like for example, uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji was there or Mughal era was there or Chola era was there. We always talk about the history saying that, okay, this is the era that happened between this year to this year. But actually when we are living currently, there are different eras which are happening now. Till 2010, between 1990 to 2010, the technology was transforming to a greater extent. We call that as an internet era. I don't know. I mean, have you seen a CD or a floppy disk or anything? Have you used CD? Yes, sir, CD. Okay, floppy? Yes, a floppy too. Floppy too. Okay, good. I'm not yes, feeling sir. old now. I'm happy to hear <laughs> that. <laughs> sir, floppies were uh, there till 2013 or 12. The CPUs were supporting floppy. Then sir, after right, that, but, it was. But were like, you getting uh, floppy percentage. anywhere in the market? I doubt whether you are no, getting not, floppy. Not right now. Huh? Not right now, but sir, I had. But so sir, initially, we used to get floppies back in stores. True, true, true. In fact, I still and remember. Max, maximum storage, 600 KB, 700 KB, like that. True. See, between 1990s and 2010, internet started penetrating. I still remember the dial-up connection. I had to go to my friend's house because uh, one person in a street or one person in an area would be having an internet connection. And there'll be a dial-up connection. We used to go to our friend's house uh, to check emails and stuff. And then slowly the browsing center started coming in. I still remember Reliance Browsing Center, which was providing the fastest internet connection, just like Geo in mobile today. Reliance used to provide the fastest internet connection browsing center at that point of time. This was in early 2000s. And slowly it became like, okay, uh, dial-up connection for everyone, then fiber so connection. Cyber cafes. Okay. Cyber cafes, yes. And slowly the fiber connection started coming in the last few years. And laptops started coming in from desktop to laptop, laptop to mobile. The transition has happened. So this transition to 2010, almost everyone had access to internet. Today we are ensuring that the gram panchayats are having internet connection. They're connected by internet. Almost every office is getting connected by internet. So this is called as a technology internet era. Now post 2010, currently we are living in SMAC era. SMAC means social mobility, analytics and cloud. These four technologies coming together and together as a synergetic relationship, they're able to offer more to us. So what are these four technologies? Social first thing. I don't know how many of you have used Orkut. Did anyone use Orkut here? Yes, sir. <laughs> it was in the beginning. Uh, in uh, It was uh, like in 2012, uh, it was discontinued. I guess. Correct. So Orkut was very, very active till 2006, seven, if I'm not wrong, I still remember. And then post that Facebook came up in 2008-9, people moved from Orkut to Facebook. What we call this as virtualization of the relationships. That is through internet, we will be able to connect with more people. Today, what we are doing is nothing but social interaction, right? Over WebEx. This kind of technology enabled creation of a lot of Web 2.0 platforms. Have you heard of web 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 by any chance? No, sir. My request, can you all note it down if you want to learn more about technology? Because this is fascinating. This is happening around us. Web 2.0 is something, web 1.0 is static web. That was in late 90s and early 2000s. If you go to any website, even today, you can find a lot of websites like that. It will only have static content. No updating, nothing will happen in that website. Web 2.0 which came up in uh, late 2000s, 2007, 8, people started using web 2.0 concepts, which is called as the collaborative web or social web. You add tools like blogs, chat, then comments, likes, shares, all these things you can do so that you can share with your friends. You can comment on anything that is coming from the friends. The website started having these features. It's called web 2.0 collaborative web. And after that, Today, we are experiencing Web 3.0. You all have been reading about blockchain. So cryptocurrency. Recent cryptocurrency. Training. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cryptocurrency is one good example of Web 3.0. And Web 3.0 is about machine to machine communication. Like you have heard of smart home technologies. 
like through through a app yes, in your sir. mobile you can control your yes, washing sir. machine everything ac yes uh, electricity yeah, washing machine came machine in and... shark tank also sir correct this is nothing but web 3.0 that is can you make a machine interact with another machine that's web 3.0 so we, machines are becoming social if i have to say <laughs> web 2.0 was about people becoming social web 3.0 was about machines becoming social through internet so social technologies change the way the customers behave change the way the people behave do you all agree facebook whatsapp all these technologies have changed the way the we all talk and we all behave do you agree with me I'm yes, sure sir, the games that we used to play as kids and the games you used to play as kids would be would have been completely different. And of course, the next generation is going to be even worse, isn't it? So the robo age is approaching. Yes, Devang, I agree. I mean, it's already here actually, just that we are not aware of it. So Google is a perfect robo, isn't it? Just that we are not aware that it's a bot. The second one is mobile. Can anyone make a guess? BYOD, what is it? Google and tell me it's okay. You can Google. Yes, sir, be your own device. Bring your own device. Absolutely right. Today, I'm using my own personal laptop for my office uh, work. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not using my office laptop. And my mobile phone is connected to office emails. This was not possible 15, 20 years back. 15, 20 years back. If you want to check something, it will be, I mean, if you want to access some file in your uh, laptop or something, you have to go home and then access it. Today, you can keep it in cloud and from anywhere you can access it, correct? The mails are available in servers, the Facebook, internet, everything is available in servers. Yeah, over the internet, you can access the cloud servers and you can do that. That's what mobility is all about. Today, through mobile apps, through mobility, Anyone can work from anywhere. Today, work from home is possible during the pandemic because of this mobility concept. That's the second important technology that is in, in this era. The third one is analytics. Analytics is what we are deep diving now. That's what you're going to learn in this course. Analytics is more about collecting data about all these things, using the data for improvising, optimizing the performance. There are a lot of things that you can do with the help of data. So mining to meaning. Mining means what is mining? You keep on checking what is there, and then finally you find something good. Correct? You would have heard of coal or gold mines or coal mines and other things. What do they do? They just mine, keep mining, keep on digging. They find some treasure. They find something. For that, they were trying to find that. So data mining is nothing but a concept of mining the data to get those insights so that we can see meaning out of it. That's what analytics is all about. Bitcoin mining is, yes, that comes under cryptocurrency. Yes, Devan, correct. The yes, fourth sir. one is cloud. Cloud, uh, I don't know. I mean, have you played NFS game? Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes. How many sir. of you have seen uh, your car hanging up on the uh, roof and you're not able to continue playing or the blue screen coming up? Have you faced that situation? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes, sir. Why does that happen? The faulty in the uh, program of the game? Or so the oh, game is to lag in my system. I mean, that's why. Right. Yes. Why is it hanging? So because of the system compatibility and the average of memory time. memory of the system is memory low. Memory lag. Very good. Yes, frame. You are right. So the point is the RAM and the ROM. That's what is very less in our laptop. Correct. We with our resources. That is the read-only memory or the random access memory. This. Uh, software gaming software which you have plugged in is consuming a lot of resources ram and rom and your system is not capable of doing it and your system is struggling to enable that software play that game so it is hanging this is where cloud comes into picture cloud tells you that look boss your laptop may have very little memory your laptop may have very little computational power that is rom and ram now you can borrow the ram and rom from me that is, I am a cloud service provider like Amazon, AWS, Azure, or GCP. You can bring, uh, you can connect to me over internet and through internet, through network, you can access unlimited resources, storage as well as computational, RAM as well as ROM. 
Google Drive is an example of ROM storage capacity that you are getting extra. Or you can borrow computational power like uh, Amazon EC2 instance is more about giving computational power to you. You put a software there. If it needs more computational, more resources, it, the service provider will provide that. So that's what is cloud borrowing somebody's resources for your quick usage paper use kind of a thing. Okay, so smack is a combination of these four technologies. Social mobility analytics and cloud. The beauty is look at all the apps that you're using today. Do you see the combination of these technologies? Yes, uh, all together. In fact, uh, the best example that you can give is the one that you actively use. Make Instagram. a guess which app is that? Not Instagram. Instagram is also a good example, yes. But better than that from the same uh, brand or from the same parent company? So Facebook. Yeah, which, which other product comes from Facebook? WhatsApp. Yeah. WhatsApp, yes. I don't know. Uh, have you, I mean, do you know how much Facebook spent to buy WhatsApp? So 1.6 billion. It was a deal between the owners of the WhatsApp and Facebook. Check once again. There is a mistake in the dot. Google it. So 11.4 billion euros and 19 billion dollars. 19 billion dollars. 19 billion dollars means it's 19 unicorn. Remember in India last year we had 43 unicorns. Correct. 19, yes, 19 billion dollars for an app to communicate. And I don't know. I mean, if you have, uh, you guys are BBA students, right? So I don't know. Have you done some school projects on visual basic? By any chance? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I did. You would have created some network uh, communication app, right? Through yes, internet, sir. you can uh, chat through LAN. You can chat with another friend, a simple yes, app. Sir. And WhatsApp is nothing but same app with more of encryption and other things over internet, isn't it? Yes, sir. Now here comes the point. Tell me one thing. Why Facebook has spent $19 billion to get WhatsApp? Sir, because it contains all the smart technology. That's one reason, yes. But any other reason? Now let's come to analytics. Encryption, oh, okay. To, uh, sir, to give access to everyone, sir, because they can uh, get more customers. Means they but might sir, have one question arises, sir, on the same time, at the particular time we are talking about when WhatsApp was an independent, independent company, mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, WeChat and other uh, client also existed, but why only WhatsApp? Very good question. So, have you heard of this concept of first mover advantage? Yes, sir. Uh, some little... Yes, sir. A yes, more advantage is nothing but when an app is coming to the market, the first app that comes to the market, people tend to adopt that. And the cost of moving from that particular app to another app is usually high. Like for example, let's say uh, we are all in WhatsApp, right? Now take this whole class. Do you think everyone is also active in uh, WeChat or any other app? Most probably not, right? No, sir. So Some Telegram? of them. Telegram, not everyone may have it, isn't it? Again, so the reason I'm conscious increasing. No, market may increase, but look at it this way. Why are you in WhatsApp? Because your friends are using WhatsApp, correct? Yes, sir. So wherever your friends are, you want to communicate with them. That's why you are using WhatsApp. Now, if you're all your friends are moving to the another app, only then you will be moving to another app, correct? So it's just yes, not sir. you migrating to another app. It's your community migrating to another app, which is generally very, very tough. Unless the other app is amazingly so, uh, uh, with loaded with features, which is making you come there, which every one of your friends are interested to come there. That is rarely a choice, right? May not happen, isn't it? Yes. So, sir. first more advantage was with WhatsApp. The important thing, this is where analytics comes into picture. This happened around 2012-13, if I'm not wrong. And at that point of time, two companies were wait, fighting for customers' data. One is Google, the other one is Facebook. Google got your mobile number and both these companies are brilliant companies. They know very well that the future is going to be with the smartphones. 
So we need to get access to the smartphone of the customer so that I can get access to a lot of data. That's what is the philosophy. So Google got your data, got access to your mobile very easily. Can you tell me what are the things which Google might have done to get the access? So advertisements. No, not that. Any other guess? So Google actually focuses on how and what we search on their website so that they get an access to all the information and all about our algorithms on what all we uh, search on Google about. So that's no, that is there. Access. I'm not denying but, it. But, but sir, that was introduced later in uh, 2015 or 16 when uh, it has to increase its competition regarding its various by Gmail, Sir, when we create a Gmail account, we'll, we'll give you our all details, no, sir. You are pretty close. Cookies, uh, cookies are also there. Pushkar and I think Pratyush is also talking about the same. Cookies are there. That's what I think everybody is talking about, like how they track us and other things, which is right. But I'm not talking about that is that is there. But do you know first time when did you give your mobile number to Google? How did you give that? Um, so we used to when we were making an account. A Gmail, Gmail account. Why Gmail account? Gmail account, yes, sir. Same. When you created your Gmail account, they asked you like, boss, we want to increase your security. We want to give you a two step verification process. Would you like to register with us? Give your mobile number. We will send you a notification. Correct. Yes, sir. And so we thought that, that we are. Uh -huh. Was that a trick? Of that Google? is a trick, isn't it? Tell me one thing in the name of protecting your data. They're asking for your mobile number, which is one of the important privacy thing, right? Will you give a mobile number to anyone in the world? If somebody a random person from the street is asking your mobile number, will you give it? No, sir. But people gave, gave it right to Google. You get that. So that's one trick. Second trick. Tell me one, our, our privacy is compromised. Yes, they absolutely right. Second part is. Remember Nokia went down around 2007-8 and uh, there came a new uh, software, system software for mobiles. Which which software was that? It's Aqua OS. Android. iOS. Android. iOS came in, but iOS was smart. They realized that Android is coming in a big way. So iOS and Android I had a head to head competition. But uh, Nokia was using Symbian software, which was not competing with Android to a greater extent. That's where Nokia died. But Android, the, there is only one brand associated with Android. Which brand is that? Google or Facebook? So Google. Google, correct. Today, you are the if you're using an Android phone, don't you think that you are backing up everything with uh, this yes, sir. Android and your Google account, isn't it? Yes, sir. Don't you think this is a trick again? So Google has done a smart way to capture all your data. Now, Facebook was under tremendous pressure. They were looking at getting your information because Facebook relies on your data, isn't it? Now to get the data, Facebook also tried the same thing. Remember, Facebook asked you to give your mobile number so that they can send you notifications, correct? Facebook asked everything regarding email, Facebook number, photo and Correct. information regarding our relatives and all and yes everything including your political affiliation they were asking in fact now the point is when facebook was asking your mobile number initially some people gave it and they realized that there are too many notifications every like comment share was coming as a sms to you which was irritating so people backed out a lot of people did not register at all facebook was facing a tough challenge at that point of time it was under pressure from google that okay google was able to capture the data but facebook could not they wanted to capture the complete data of your mobile. So which was an app which had complete access to your mobile? WhatsApp. Now uninstall WhatsApp once today and install it again. I, with this in mind, you'll be surprised the kind of access you're providing to WhatsApp. Just open WhatsApp and click that uh, pin button attachment. You will see what are the things that you can send through WhatsApp. Your photos. So, your but in iOS, so but in iOS, uh, the iOS has restricted the uh, uh, what do we say permissions to to device. It always asks whether we have to say send it or whether we have to give the access to the gallery or contacts anything. Correct. iOS is more secure, right? Data privacy, they are promising it, but with Android, it's not the case. 
but not everybody can sell a kidney and get an iPhone, isn't it? <laughs> so iPhone is, that's the reason iPhone is expensive in a way. Android phones are cheaper because they, everyone relies on your data. Now WhatsApp has complete access to your mobile, complete access, your photos, gallery, your documents, your contacts. I may not have a WhatsApp, but the moment I give my mobile number to you, you store it as Lakshmi Narayanan. Obviously, WhatsApp is going to take the number and say that, look, Lakshmi's number is this, please add it to our register. In fact, the funny thing is Facebook told American court in an affidavit that they do not use WhatsApp data. But do you know today, if you have stored my number tomorrow morning, you will get a recommendation in your uh, Instagram, in your Facebook saying that, would you like to add Lakshmi as your friend? Have you noticed that? Yes, sir, it happens. That's purely analytics running on the data shared by the customer. So these four technologies have really made a significant difference in the way this world is operating. Never miss these four technologies. Take LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all the apps that you're using today almost is a combination of all these things. So you need to remember that almost every innovation that is happening today is a mix of these technologies. So you should be aware of it. In fact, today we are living in a world where computers outnumber humans. 10 to 1. How many technology gadgets that you use? Think about it. I use a mobile phone. I use a, a Fitbit device. I use a laptop, maybe one or two laptops sometimes. There are so many devices that I'm using every day, isn't it? Now, the number of people in my family versus the number of technology devices, which one is more? Obviously, the number of devices, isn't it? So that's what is making yes, the sir. difference. With more number of devices, we are actually capturing a lot of information. With more information, we can do more predictions. We are getting into a foresight era. In fact, the IoT devices that we are talking about over the last five, six years have just increased the volume or exponentially increased the volume of data captured about everything. So analytics is playing a significant role in this context with the kind of data, with the kind of automation that is happening in today's context. So have you understood where analytics is fitting in when we are talking about this whole gamut of digital technologies? Are you able to understand this whole perspective?